Hey everybody, back with a little bit of an update. Uh, I know it's been a little bit since I've posted anything. Uh, I want to say end of the month, hopefully I'll start getting some better ideas for other things to post. Channel might take a few different directions. I'll make sure to keep stuff with the X1 Carbon as well though. Um, start with, let's just go ahead and jump into the printer itself. Um, haven't really had any issues with it. The minor problems I have experienced aren't really problems with the printer. It's just kind of figuring out different things and how to print with it. Uh, for example, they may have fixed it by now because they have done a few updates. I was having issues with adaptive layer height. Um, if you use it and do multicolor, and the trick to doing that is you have to get rid of the prime tower uh, it'll actually skip layers. Like, it'll just have gaps in it. But just one of those things that I kind of learned with it, and it was a stupid thing I was playing with. It wasn't necessarily, this is a way you should do it. It was just me kind of playing with the settings and seeing what I could get away with. And after looking at the settings again, it looks like they actually got rid of the adaptive layer height option altogether at least i don't see it and when i try searching it i'm not really getting any results on it so it looks like they removed that feature i don't know if that's temporary if they're bringing it back or what but as of right now it looks like it only lets you set a certain layer height and it sticks to that overall uh, another example of that is they kind of introduced which build plate you're using now. So if you're using a combination of filaments that don't necessarily approve for the same build plate, for example, PVA and PETG, I believe it would only work with the hot build plate versus the engineering build plate. It complained about one of them, so it wouldn't even slice it. So it does introduce a little bit more of finagling if you're doing certain things uh, as far as choosing the build plate. But to be honest with the build plate, I have kind of just been using the one side, the engineering side that it originally came with. A note about that, I would avoid using the scraper it came with on that side. But an advantage I found with it is it works the same as both of them. You have to use glue with it. And I haven't experienced a print not printing to it yet. And taking it off, I find to be a little bit easier than the other side with PLA or PETG. And cleaning it. I have actually gotten even lazier with. I just kind of run it down to the sink, turn on the hot water, and wait until I see all the glue disappear. And that has been pretty easy. And then just kind of pat it dry and it's ready to go for another print. So no chemicals, no alcohol, just kind of rinsing it under hot water has been working very well for me. But another thing I want to hop into now then is an order that I placed. I bought a few of the build plates. I haven't used any of them yet. I've still just been using the one, but I bought a couple to have them as backup. So here's mine and I'll give an updated picture of where I got it with the scraper. Right now it's just kind of fingerprints and stuff on it when I did this video. <laughs> but you can see it's still in decent shape. And then the first one I believe is the PI or the hot plate hot. Yeah, I believe it's the hot plate one. High temperature plate. I'm sorry. Um, so there's a side it has the little sticker thing on it. And on the back side, it can still be used the same as what the original one came with. I don't know if yeah, it says engineering plate on it. You can see one of the tripods I printed out on this as well in the reflection there. I'll post a few of the pictures of it after this. And then moving on to the cool plate that I bought, which I found kind of interesting. 
So cool plate will say it on the sticker that it comes pre-applied with. And then when you flip it over, it's another engineering plate basically. So I might just buy a couple more of these. I do want to get one of the textured ones just to have it. For most of my applications, I prefer the smooth side because I kind of make parts or when I take other parts, for example, I'll cut them smooth and make little pegs. That way you can apply it. And you'll kind of see that with one of the Halloween prints that I did, made a nice little Charizard helmet and took a couple of prints. I'll put the links to them down below, but I basically went into Shaper 3D, made a reference box that was 250 by 250 mil or yeah, 250 by 250 milliliter millimeters squared. So I just made a big box and I got the circumference of his head and applied that to a little model in it to get where the head would fit in. And I just kind of took the box and broke it up into pieces that would fit inside of the bamboo. I made little peg marks for it and everything came out really well. I had one issue. I can't remember what the exact problem was, but I ended up having to use a second thing of filament. So I ended up spray painting it, but it turned out really well. Um, moving on, the new P1P, I believe it's called. Actually looks like it's a pretty good printer. Um, I do believe it's missing a few things like the LiDAR sensor and I don't think it comes with a camera. I think if you pre-ordered it at a certain time, it came with it, but it looks like it's going to be a nifty little printer if it can keep up with the speeds and from different videos I've seen of other people using it, it seems really nice. I like it because I like the idea of it being more easily modified because the wall, you can put walls on it. I don't believe it comes with them. I don't want to speak directly towards it because I don't own one and I don't think I'll get one quite yet, but eventually I might depending on where things go. But looks like you can modify things a little bit easier just because it has that open frame. But yeah, it looks pretty solid. Supposedly it'll get the same print speeds. Um, once again, my only slight complaint is the LiDAR sensor, but at the same time, as long as it gets the bed leveling, I don't think it'll be a huge issue. Because even with the X1 Carbon, the most it'll do is alert me. I go look at it and most of the time it's not even a first layer issue. There's a little fuzz or something on there that got in the way and I just click resume. So the LiDAR is nice. It's helpful for certain things. Another thing that I'm curious about is how much it's actually changing on the filament based on the LiDAR readings when it does the filament calibration at the beginning. Um, not sure. I'll have to find a way to test that. I'll start looking at different brands that I buy and start paying more attention to the temperatures and things that it does. But I'm curious how much it's actually changing its parameters based on it. Because there are some things where I've taken PETG and I've up the temperature by like five degrees. Just that way it seals the layers a little bit better because I've been doing some waterproof prints. Um, but other than that, it's something I'm curious about. Um, we'll kind of have to see. One of the things I would like to see is them make a larger printer. It'd be nice to have something that you can print bigger prints on. For example, that Charizard helmet, it would have been nice if I could have done it in two parts maybe instead of breaking it up as much as I did just that way it had a flat section and I wouldn't have to worry about supports everywhere just on critical areas but yeah we'll see going forward with the channel um 
I'll still do things on the X1 Carbon as I see different things, but I feel like it's kind of become saturated with videos. I see them on TikTok, on YouTube. Uh, as I see new things that I don't think people are covering on it, I'll talk about it if I think it's important. But other than that, I will have to start seeing about different things to start posting and creating. So we'll see what else I come up with. I do have an idea to maybe do some pen testing stuff and see to, and just do some network scans on it as I send things through the cloud just to see what all is revealed and different things that happen along that end, which one of those other things that I kind of wish they would do i'm not certain they will i kind of don't see them going this direction but it'd be nice if they release something so you could host the server yourself so you're not sending it through the cloud but you're sending it to your own server i'm sure there'd be some networking things but anybody that would be willing to do that would probably have a little bit of knowledge in that area anyway um but we'll see uh, the other stuff that I kind of want to jump into, I need to hold off until I figure out different things about either copywriting, patenting, or however all that stuff works for posting my models and doing different things like that. So once I have that figured out, I do plan to start releasing some of those. Nothing truly amazing, just some of my little things that help around the house and with gardening and just random things in general. So... I'll start looking into some of that and see what all I can get released, but I'll start thinking of some other things to get posting and go from there. Have a good one, everybody.